Morning. Welcome to Unity of Walter Creek. It is such a delight to have you joining us. Thank you. Today, as we start into July, our music will be celebrating the, the fun and marvelous freedom that's a part of our 4th of July. And in a message, we're going to touch that freedom within, that important transformation that lets us be truly free to be who we are. In our meditation, Today we're going to touch a time of silence and I, I invite you to join us to let yourself find that place to rest within your own heart and let spirit flow through you. Know you're a part of our spiritual community. We're so grateful to have you with us. Have a wonderful day. Bless you. All right. Welcome to Unity Center of Walnut Creek. As this is the Sunday before July 4th, uh, we're going to be singing some patriotic songs this morning. So please stand as you are able and join us in singing the Star Spangled Banner. for the birthday of our country.
pleasure to welcome you to our service this morning. So, as we begin our service, let's take a moment to make sure that our cell phones are completely turned off. And as we do that, please join me in waving hello to our online friends. Your presence adds to our spiritual community, and we truly appreciate you joining us this morning. We're pleased to have with us today the sounds of grace, Nancy and Chip, and our song leader is Lisa. Thank you. <laughs> so let's open our service by focusing our intention through our opening affirmation. Please join me in prayerfully and powerfully saying it together three times. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And one more time. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And let's continue by reading together our statement of unity. God's love is within each of us, guiding us to dynamically express our wholeness, wisdom, and abundance. We acknowledge the universal wisdom in the Christ teachings and in all spiritual paths. I now choose to open to the presence of divine love and to be changed at depth. Throughout this sacred time, God is uplifting me and through my heart, the world. And now Jeannie Fusion will read our daily word. The words for today are divine order. I greet this day with gratitude for my life, now and in the past, with anticipation of the wonders to come. Every day of my life is a part of my spiritual journey, and I am thankful for each new experience. In silent contemplation, I become aware of the power within that guides me. My heart opens to the wisdom of God and the perfect order unfolding in my life. Each person I meet, each decision I make, each opportunity I encounter is in divine order. I embrace every development as a gift and, look, and move forward with confidence. Right here, right now, is the perfect place for me. I complete what is mine to do and grow in the full potential through divine order at work in my life. The scripture for today is Corinthians 13, 12. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. The affirmation for today is, I am in the right place at the right time. Together, I am in the right place at the right time. Take a nice deep breath. And repeat, I am in the right place at the right time. Hallelujah. 
highlight a few upcoming events. The details of these and, wonder, and the other wonderful activities are in your bulletin and on our website. Today is birthday Sunday, so please stand if you have a birthday in July so we can celebrate you. A new afternoon HeartMath book club with Reverend David starts this Tuesday. Join him in journeying through one of his favorite books, The Hidden Power of the Heart. Also, we're having our traditional 4th of July picnic. The details are in your bulletin today. And the e-waste e recycle event is this Saturday. Bring your electronic recycling for reuse in an eco-friendly way and join Reverend Susan next Sunday for her workshop, Communion of the Heart, Trust and Transformation in Relationships. Now I'll ask Julie and Lisa to please come up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey Lisa, did you hear about the Cool Jazz youth, uh, concert right here at Unity? Julie, when is that? I didn't hear about that. It's on July 28th, and you know how we get tickets? How do we get tickets? <laughs> right out there, right out there on the patio after service at unitycenter.net. All right, uh, Under good. special events, and ask any choir member. Good, and what is happening? Who's performing? Oh, it's going to be really, really sunny, as in sunny, fairly. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that Sonny. He's played here several times at the service and at the Wave, and he's going to be joining uh, Fusion. Some of our own musicians are in Fusion. That is so cool. So uh, were there, is there going to be food at this event? Oh, will there be food? I mean gourmet. I mean gourmet food prepared by <laughs> I Live to Eat. Gourmet Yeet. picnic dinners. Yummy. So why, Julie, why are we having this event at Unity? Well, it's to benefit the Joyful Noise Choir. Yes. All right. Good. So please join us in having a very cool evening, and we'll be out on the patio selling tickets. Thank, Thank you. you. And now I'm going to invite Jeannie up. Last summer at the Spiritual Enrichment and Education Week, SEE Week, I had an oh, aha, wow, hmm, week. Okay? The oh was that I got to take classes in core unity classes, reading texts and information from the founders of unity and teachers currently working at unity. The aha was that everything I learned there connected what I've learned in services here and in classes there and just kind of crystallized those principles and beliefs. The wow was looking at the experience, the background, the knowledge, the skill of the teachers who came here to teach and the wisdom and inspiration and insight of the fellow students. And the mmm was the community in the classes meeting the other people, joining together the care, and then having a leisurely lunch with John's wonderful food where we could informally connect and share and enjoy. So if you want an oh, aha, wow, and mmm experience, please come to SEE Week. Um, registration forms are on the table. Thank you. <laughs> If you're here with us for the first time, we welcome you to our spiritual community. We would love to meet you and invite you to experience our community as a guest at a unity event of your choosing. 
Please take the very important presence card from the seat pocket in front of you to the welcome table on the patio to learn more about us and to receive your gift certificate. So if you're willing, please raise your hand if you're here for the first time so we can acknowledge you. We'd like to extend a special blessing to you and everyone new to our service, both here and online. So here we go, together. We love you, we bless you, and we behold the light of God shining through you. Thank you. Welcome. So let's take a moment to greet each other. Enjoy taking that moment until the music begins. Okay, take that deep breath. <sighs> Wiggle around, get comfortable. This is our time when we enter into that experience of prayer and meditation together. So, as you turn inward, just gently letting go. And let's begin our time of prayer by singing together our Lord's Prayer. Mother, Father, God.
presence as we take this time to awaken, to know more deeply than ever before your presence filling us, healing us, lifting us, and expressing as us. And so to know and touch that awareness. Help us for just a moment. Let go of the perceptions that we have that limit us in time and space. For just a moment, we choose to let go of those perceptions that we have of our ages, of old and young or somewhere on a journey in between. For we are infinite spiritual beings touching in to experience the beauty of humanness. And we let go for a moment of those roles mother, father, child, worker, all those ways that we hold responsibility. For we are one with an order and love that flows through our lives, that flows from us, from the very center of being. And we let go for just a moment of that sense of limit, of that perception that is limited by how far we can see or touch. For we are one with a light and a love that flows from the very center of our hearts to beyond the reaches of the universe. <coughs> Gently letting go. We touch and remember that we are one that is an infinite love. We are the expressions of that love. We are that love itself. And giving permission for all those roles to gently be present as clothes that we might wear for a moment. We enter into that place of sacred stillness to simply rest at one with the one. Peace, be still. Peace, be still.
Father, Father God. Infinite love. This love that we are, that we send it forth to heal and bless. First as healing to our own bodies, and then to radiate it as healing to each one that is dear to us, lifting, blessing, guiding each one. We radiate this love sending it across the spiritual community, becoming a part of that light and wisdom that touches all around each one. We hold this place, this place of prayer, this place of knowing the presence of God's love with all who have brought their prayer requests here knowing each one is lifted into that which is the highest. We radiate this love across the communities in which we live. And at this time when we celebrate our nation, we send this love across our nation, healing the fears of all its people and bringing forth their great wisdom and compassion. And we send this love to all who join us in prayer, whether in mosque or synagogue, temple or church, whether gathered at home or on the hillsides. And we send this love to Mother Earth and to all her creatures. And we send it to the heart of every single person in the earth. For you are that love in every heart. And in that love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Please join me. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And once again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. heard this next song several years ago when I attended a memorial service for my grandfather. I was very touched by it and had always wanted to sing it and we're going to sing it for you now.
got so many talented people in this place, don't we? Oh, I love it. Okay, so we hit July. That means there's a spiritual assignment that comes with that. And part of that is you've got to check out your freedom consciousness. Okay, that's part of what that is about. And so how is your freedom consciousness? You're feeling pretty free and unattached and flowing and... Well, I'm, I've got, a, got something for you to look at. I started looking at, the, at freedom and recognized that, first of all, we only get to freedom if we are willing to do self-love. Okay? Because otherwise, we let everything hang on to us and control us. Okay, so the real work then becomes, in one sense, being willing to love yourself. And that's not a new teaching. We, it was there from Jesus and a lot of different ones, a lot of great teachers. And because I often look at Jesus, I, I wanted to touch it through another teacher today. A little, little different approach by old Lao Tzu. Now, for those of you that, that may not be familiar with Lao Tzu, he is the, the ancient Chinese sage that brought us Taoism through the beautiful Tao Te Ching. And so, and what I like about him is after I think I've read him and understanding, I usually find I didn't. <laughs> so, one of the ways that he described this process, this journey that we have into spiritual mastery, this part that we're here to consciously embrace, okay, as a spiritual being, we are growing spiritually, and what does that look like? So what he would do is, is give a description as one of the master, of that individual that had mastered that spiritual self. And he says, the master stays behind, that is why she is ahead. She is detached from all things. That is why she is one with them. Because she has let go of herself, she is perfectly fulfilled. Because she has let go of herself, she is perfectly fulfilled. Okay, now I know that's got to be about self-love, okay? I was thinking a little bit more about Chocolate and really good wine. <laughs> but I don't think that's where Lao Tzu is going. Okay. Uh, because she is like, go of herself, she is perfectly fulfilled. So somewhere in there, I know, I know he's got to be touched because that's, that's what takes us into the experience is that love is what takes us into the fulfillment. So I, I looked at that and I began remembering uh, an experience that was part of something we've talked about a couple times. I shared with you the, uh, the story and experience of uh, Arnita Morjani, the woman who had a near-death experience from uh, the terminal uh, cancer. And in that experience, one of the great gifts was that she was able to not only retain consciously this tremendous experience of her spiritual self, but she was also able then to bring understanding and touch it into parts of her life. And there was a part of her life where some of the things that really began limiting her that eventually resulted in her cancer experience, some of those things began coming into focus. She has the experience of being a uh, little girl she was from an Indian family, so she was Hindu, and living in Hong Kong. And in Hong Kong, she was going to a Catholic school. <laughs> so it turns out the Catholic school was mainly Europeans. So here is this Hindu girl in the Catholic school, and uh, of course, she's the one with the dark skin and the dark hairs and dark features in, in a, in a uh, much more European environment. So there's probably a point as a kid where you felt some of that. 
you know, where you're the, the odd one, doesn't quite look like everybody else, doesn't quite fit in in some way. Well, Anita was having this experience. And because she was a little different, she ended up not being accepted, not being a part, not being chosen when they played the team, you know, the sports, and, and also kind of that focus when there was bullying that went on, real easy for it to focus on her. She shares, shares one moment where they were in the cafeteria, and the, uh, one of the boys that tended to do the bullying thing uh, got up and he had his, had his tray of all the trash from his lunch and he just went over and he dumped it on hers. And then he pointed at her and began laughing. And of course his friends began joining in and laughing. And for Anita, it was that moment that kind of passed the tolerance that she'd had. And so she grabbed her thing of orange drink and stood up and poured it over his head. <laughs> and then she noticed the anger that was coming out of him and she figured that was probably a good time to leave. <laughs> so she ran into the, the girl's room and she's in there and she's crying. And she, she was able to reflect for us, some of the things that she experienced in that moment. One was, she hadn't been taught to behave like that. That wasn't okay. And so she felt very bad at having given into that and behaved that way. And so vulnerable for being so different. And wanting so much to fit in to be accepted, feeling really bad about herself. Now I looked at the love that was there. And I gotta admit, when she picked up that orange juice and dumped it over his head, I wanted to go, yes! <laughs> That self-love to stand up and say, no, I'm, I will stand up for me. And uh, we'll ask for forgiveness from all the teachers in the room that have taught us that's not okay. <laughs> and way to go, Anita. Um, <laughs> and and there, there was a tremendous self-love and simply her awareness when we let ourselves be aware of what's really going on, even though it doesn't feel good. But then I realized there was something else that self-love gives. And she didn't know about that. She didn't know how to do it. Because what she experienced began to bind her into a state of perception of herself that would limit her through her life in the near-death experience, part of what she shares is that this not being okay, this having to suppress who she was to try and please everybody else so that she could be accepted, was part of what eventually resulted in the cancer. Now, I need to just take a time out. Lots of folks get to play the C game, so uh, no projecting from her experience on yours or anybody you know. Okay, got me? This is just her experience, her perception of her cancer experience. Okay? Good. Okay. Time in. So, she is in this experience of feeling so bad about who she was. And she got to see it when she had the near-death experience and found out that that wasn't who she was at all. That she was a magnificent spiritual being. And it stunned her to recognize that as a spiritual being, she was this magnificent presence. And that that should never be hidden at all. Now, because there may be somebody in the room that's hidden a little bit of their magnificence. 
Okay. Let's just take a moment and uh, just remember together, I am a magnificent spiritual being. Join me. I am a magnificent spiritual being. Again, I am a magnificent spiritual being. Okay, now in case it's not sinking in, tell your neighbor they are a magnificent spiritual being. Okay, and the other neighbor. And once again for yourself, I am a magnificent spiritual being. Now that's the truth, and that's the truth of who Anita was. And yet, she didn't know how to get free. She didn't know how to get free of this that trapped her. And there is a way of freedom. The way to freedom is forgiveness. But she didn't know how. And she didn't know that she was trapped in a perception of herself that was not true. But it is through forgiveness that we release ourselves from our judgments of ourselves. And most of us have one or two going on <laughs> by forgiving ourselves and all, also by forgiving those others that have reinforced that, the billies that show up on our journey. Okay, by forgiveness. Now I want to just ask you to check for a moment. Is there anything you've been carrying along for a while? Now, when you, we were going all the way back to her childhood, so some of those things we've carried for a while. Anything that kind of keeps that being that you are limited, keeps that magnificence from showing, just let it come up into your mind. Don't need to do anything. Just say, it's okay to be aware. No commitments. Just say, okay, let me be aware if that's there. Maybe there's something that has journeyed with you long enough. Okay. So just let it be there and hang out. Because I want to give you a look at freedom. Now, she wasn't able to do that at that point. The freedom really came when knowing who she was, she could forgive and let go of all those perceptions of herself. And of course, when she did, there was nothing in her body to support the cancer. And so she returned to a cancer-free body at the point of its literally dying of cancer. So I want to tell you about the experience of two men, Chris Lucas and Steve Backman. Now, this experience happened about eight years ago. Backman uh, was 39. A uh, man who was in and struggling with very deep depression. Okay, he was suicidal. And in this very difficult emotional state, the way that he coped was by excess drinking. And the result of that was that he was going down a highway, having had too much to drink, and crossed the yellow line and struck a car driven by Chris Lucas. Now, what Lucas experienced was his lungs were punctured. The description is that almost every bone in his body was broken. And he spent the next six weeks in a coma, right on the edge of life or death. Now, he came out of that coma. But during that six weeks, Backman was charged with felony drunk driving. And he was aware, I'm guessing from press accounts and so forth, of what uh, Lucas was experiencing, the fact that you know, here was half a million dollars spent in those six weeks just on the medical bills to give him a chance to live. And of course, whatever he would face in life would be for a long time intense pain and limitation and huge impact on his family. Now with this, Beckman was really and legitimately tormented. 
realizing what he had done. So, not knowing what else to do, and against the advice of many people, he went to the hospital and he asked Lucas's family if he could go in and see him. So his wife went in and checked. Then his wife took Beckman in to see Lucas. Lucas saw him and immediately said, Open up your arms and come here. And the two men hugged and cried together. Beckman said, The love and forgiveness they showed me was a miracle something I never knew existed. When I walked out of that hospital room, I weighed 500 pounds less. I saw everything in brilliant color when before, so for so long, it had been only black and white. Which man? They both did, didn't they? How justifiable it would have been for Lucas to go along angry and resentful. Anyone would understand. And how justifiable it would have been for Beckman to continue to view himself as not okay and unworthy as he had been doing. Justifiable. And yet, they entered into freedom because of forgiveness. Forgiveness to the self. Forgiveness to others. That's where our freedom comes from. That's what really sets us free. Lao Tzu. Because she has let go of herself, she is perfectly fulfilled. Because she has let go of herself, she is perfectly fulfilled. Loving ourselves enough to let go of all that stuff we figured out and letting ourselves have freedom instead. Free of all those perceptions. Because I'll tell you, the only one that's true is that you are a magnificent spiritual being. That's true. It was true before you got here. It's true all the way through the journey. And it's true long after this part of the journey is over. Anita, in, in her experience, saw that thread she was looking at this life that she experienced. She saw that thread that all ran all the way back to Billy. I couldn't help but wonder if she'd have known. Someone could have helped her enter into that place of self-love and forgiveness for herself, for others. Would that thread still have been there? And would she have had to go into death itself to find it? Or might that beautiful being have found another journey? I don't know the answer to that question. But I do know this. You don't need to die to get free. Now, it's not a bad deal. I'm not knocking, letting go when the time comes. But living right now, 
letting yourself experience that love, loving enough to let it go. Okay, now you brought that little thing up you've been holding in the back. I've seen him back there. Okay. Now, how do you do it? How do you forgive? I'll tell you where it starts. Now, the truth is there's many different ways. And there's different things that we pick up, the different, different ways we work with it. Gee, our Fortis class was working with it two weeks ago. You know, we've got radical forgiveness coming up next month. All sorts of ways that we, we work with the experience of forgiveness. But it starts when you want to be free. That's where it begins. So I invite you to ask yourself, do you want to be free? If you do, that's the point that it starts. Because that's the point. We love ourselves enough to let go of ourself. Because she has let go of herself, she is perfectly fulfilled. All right. So take that, take that thing and just check it out. It's okay to say no. You've carried it a long time, you can carry it longer. It's all right. You do not have to be happy in every part of your life. Sometimes we have enjoyed being miserable and sharing it with others and go, oh, ain't it awful for you? Well, let me tell you how bad it is for me. I mean, you know, we got, we got some good things, so, you know, I'm not saying you have to let go of it. But if you, if you want to be free, to be free, you have to let go of it. Okay. And it starts with the desire, the choice to be free. I choose to be free and live in my fulfillment. I choose to be free and live in my fulfillment. If you want to, join me. I choose to be free and live in my fulfillment. Again, I choose to be free and live in my fulfillment. Once again, I choose to be free and live in my fulfillment. One of the wonderful things is once you make that choice, it really gets fun. Bless you. If you'd like prayer support for challenges or celebrations, please ask our heart ministers. They'll be available after the service, in the sanctuary, and on the patio. You'll know our heart ministers because they're wearing the lavender stoles. You're also invited to place a prayer request in the prayer box at the front door, in the book center, or by selecting the prayer request button online, and we'll be praying with you throughout the week. Now it is time for our prosperity celebration. For love in action or credit card donations, there are envelopes provided in the back of each chair. I invite you to take your tither offering in your hand and be aware that God is the source of all our good. Let's repeat our affirmation together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. the faithful 
Well, let's bless our children together. Children, you are loved, special, and important. God loves you, and so do we. All right. And we've got a couple of these beings that are leaving high school and heading on into things beyond there. So a couple graduations. Andrew Messitz. Glory Calger. Glory. Arnie Calger. Yeah. Ian Mullins. McKenna Walls. Yeah, that was Nathaniel Douglas. And Hannah Early. Hannah, yeah. Okay. So. All right, okay. Yeah, we also have, have another uh, completion here. Uh, Nathaniel. Nathaniel's been our uh, regional representative to the uh, YOU, done a fantastic job having just completed that. They have elected another regional representative, Kyla Douglas. Kayla. Where are Kayla? Kayla. <laughs> so brother and sister, way to go, way to hang in there. We receive these gifts, knowing that true gift given here is the commitment on each of our hearts to touch this world in a way that brings forth its wholeness, its beauty, and its peace. Let's stand together and take hands and share together our prayer of protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And our peace song. Right now. So let it shine and have fun! <laughs> <laughs>